Good morning, respected teachers and all my fellow mates. My name is Kartik Arora, and today I am going to present my seminar on the topic underwater welding. First of all, I would like to tell you about the process of welding. Welding is a process which can be defined as a joining of two metals metallurgically by fusion to produce a single piece of metal. This basically joins two pieces of metals by applying pressure or intense heat or sometimes both to melt the edges of metals so that they fuses permanently and the joint formed is a permanent joint. This technique is 2500 years old but with the advancements now almost all the metals are weldable it's just that the proper processes and techniques are used. Now I would like to tell you about underwater welding. Underwater welding is exceptionally an important technique for underwater fabrication works. Generally the offshore structures like oil drilling rigs, pipelines and platforms are installed although some of these do experience failures during their use. Therefore any repair will require the use of underwater welding techniques. There had been a many attempts taken to use this technique for the repair of ships and other offshore structures which have been very successful since the early years. Most of the developments have come from the trials and error investigations only. Now I would like to tell you about the principle of working process. The process of underwater welding takes place in four steps. First, the work that has to be welded is firstly connected to one side of an electric circuit and a metal electrode to the other side of the electric circuit. Then these two parts of the circuit are brought together and then separated slightly. The electric current then jumps that small gap and causes a spark which thereby melts the metal edge forming a weld. At the same time, the topmost part of the weld melts, electrode melts and metal droplets are projected into the welded section. During this process, the flux that is covering the electrode metal in order to provide a shielding gas which is used to stabilize the column and shield of the transfer metal. The arc then burns in a cavity that is formed inside the flux covering which is designed to burn slower than the metal edge of the electrode used. Now we know that weldability of steel in environment is different different in different habitats. As we know that the underwater welding is way more difficult in comparison to that performed in open air. This is just because of the high pressure and hydrogen content in the weld metal and cooling rates. Weldability of steel in water environment is generally governed by its hot or cold cracking tendency. The strength of steel used for the deeper water structure is a very important factor because high strength steel is generally required at greater depths. According to these, the type of underwater, underwater welding is classified in two parts, wet welding and dry welding. Wet welding indicates that welding is performed underwater directly exposed to the wet environment. In wet welding, MMA is used, MMA in the sense manual metal arc welding. Power supply used is direct current and the polarity is negative polarity. There are many advantages of wet welding. There are widely used in repair of offshore structures, good versatility and low cost of welding. The welder can reach any portion of the structure that cannot be welded by other welding methods. There is no enclosure and time lost in the building. The equipments are easily available and minimal in use. They have disadvantages too, like rapid quenching of metal occurs in the metal welded by the water surrounded. it. Large amount of hydrogen is present in the welded region which causes cracks and poor visibility is one another major advantage of the wet underwater welding. Second part is dry welding. Dry welding is also known as hyperbaric welding. It is carried out in a chamber sealed around the structure that is to be welded. The habitat is sealed onto the pipeline filled with a mixture of oxygen and helium at the ambient pressure. It has also advantages and disadvantages. As this method is practiced in a chamber, the welder is immune to marine animals and ocean currents. It is well immunated and has its own environmental control system. Good quality welds are produced in this process, but it has disadvantages too. The habitat requires large quantity of complex equipments which are way costlier than wet welding. One cannot use the same chamber for the another job. It is only for one time use purpose. Conventional underwater welding techniques. They are of two types, 
shielded metal arc welding and flux code arc welding. Firstly, shielded metal arc welding. In this process, flux covering the metals during welding melts during the welding process. In this technique, direct current is used and usually polarity is straight. Electrodes are usually waterproofed. Second, flux code arc welding. This technique is commonly used in high deposition rate welding processes that adds the benefits of flux to the welding simplicity of MIG welding. This process has a good weld appearance. Flexibility in operation, high deposition rates, low operator skills are some notable advantages of this process. With the advancements now, there are currently two types of underwater welding techniques which are being practiced nowadays. First, friction welding. Friction welding is a process of solid state welding which produces coalescence of materials by the heat obtained from mechanically induced sliding motion between the rubbing surfaces. Second, laser welding. Laser being a source of coherent and monochromatic radiations has a wide scope in the application of material processing. In this process, the focused laser beam is made to irradiate the workpiece at the given speed. There are certain requirements or we can say characteristics for a good underwater welding process. First, there is, there is a requirement of inexpensive welding equipment, low welding cost and easy to operate and flexibility of operation in all the positions. It should permit good visibility. It should produce good quality and reliable welds. It should be easily automated and there should be minimum electrical hazards and a minimum of 20 cm per minute welding speed at least. It has so many applications. I would like to mention some of them. First, offshore construction for tapping sea resources, temporary repair work caused by ships collision accidents, salvaging vessels sunk in the sea, repair and maintenance of ships, construction of large ships beyond the capacity of existing docks. Now, as we know that it has too many advantages and disadvantages, but there are so many risks involved in this process like electric shocks. It is one of the biggest threats to the underwater welders in electrocution. Explosion as the combination of hydrogen and oxygen can result in the formation of numerous gas pockets. There are so many diseases which can be caused to the practicer like decompression thickness, drowning, hypothermia, hearing impairment and it too has some disadvantages to the marine life. Over the half century, considerable research effort has been made to improve the process performance and control strategies for the various underwater welding processes. However, there are still many problems to overcome. The major efforts on research and development should be focused on some of the topics like I would like to mention all these. Mechanized underwater welding for actual usage of very large floating structures. Investigation of the potential of using robot manipulator for underwater ultrasonic testing of welds in joints of complex geometry. Application of advanced welding techniques like friction laser welding and understand the behavior of materials after the welding and process optimization. So optimization. There are many other techniques like invention of new techniques and explore the possibility of its application in this method. Generation of research data book on weldability of materials during the underwater welding would be a great research for the future scope. With this, I would like to conclude my presentation and end the presentation.